is Battlefield 2042 similar to Planet Side 2? Now, I've been getting this question, and it's been popping up in either chats, Discord DMs, general Discord servers. I figured I would help bring some rest to the conversation by offering a quick discussion video focusing on some of the differences and similarities of the games. First off, I would like to state that Planet Side 2 has been out since 2012 and is free to play. Beginning with Planet Side 2, what we know via developer about? article that gunplay was game? actually based off of Bad Company 2's gunplay, which is why you see so many Planet Side 2 players correlate Holy the gunplay shit, being man. most I'm similar the, to the earlier on. BF titles. You can see via, via the variations of spread, bloom resetting, TTK profiles, etc. And when we look towards Battlefield 2042, we can see that gunplay released in a somewhat fucking broken state. But since the recent update, spread values, recoil patterns, have been somewhat fixed and now in a decently playable state and hit reg is the same way it's been a major issue since release and in my experience it seems as though hit reg is decently solid as of the day the video is releasing i can say that as of this video and as of today gunplay does seem somewhat similar to planet side 2's with some key differences one being input planet side 2 input is decent it's good especially when it's paired with a good pc and key config settings BF2042 still suffers from having terrible input even a month after it's released for PC players. Another issue is that there's a lack of class specific weapons which introduces a key difference between older battlefields slash planet side and 2042. It's going to segue into our next point which is classes. Planet side 2 offers several classes that change the pace of gunplay dramatically. Key classes such as the light assault which has access to carbines and jetpacks, engineers which can repair major war assets, vehicles, consoles, generators, etc. Infiltrators that have a cloak and have access to snipers to get behind enemies or in a flank position and heavy assaults which have access to light machine guns and an overshield and are the main brute force infantry unit of the game. Each class has their own specific roles that makes them shine over the other. In 2042 you have specialists, which fuck classes, I guess we don't need them anymore, and each specialist can pick whatever kit they want, whatever weapons they want to run, and fucking ru ruins squad cohesion. You really never know which player is running what. You can't call out for a specific class on your team to hold one point and take vehicles out. The main point here is that in 2042, you don't know how to fo how to focus, who to focus, what to focus in a fight. And you can't really turn the tables in a fight. But this is going to lead us into our new and next discussion point. So what I really want to hammer in here is that 120 players sucks. So Planet Side 2 players know what a large fight is. How to take advantage of a large fight. Come out as a victor, you know? One hex in planet side could turn into a massive fucking 100 v 100 fight with various vehicles, aircraft, infantry units working together to turn the tide. With various options given to planet side players via sunderers for units to spawn at, choke points for defenders to hold, and large aircrafts called galaxies for infantry to drop out of, these fights tend to flow better and continue down one lane of a continent. In 2042, seems as though they tried to simulate a fucking planet side 2 event, but managed to forget the most important parts of what makes a big fight in planet side work. 2042 lacks an efficient spawn system that keeps players within a fight and lacks lanes of cover for infantry to approach. In 2042, you can spawn on fellow squad mates when they're not in combat, which they're always in fucking combat. You can only have a max squad of about four or five players, spawn on certain vehicles, and if you don't own a capture point, uh, you can't spawn on that, but if you do, you do. And the occasional beacons, players can place down those insertion beacons or whatever. That's it. So when you're assaulting a territory in either conquest or breakthrough, you don't have lines of defense that you could place down if you're wiped. You are required to either footzerk several minutes to the same fucking objective, drive a vehicle, or fly an aircraft. You cannot form platoons or large squads to assault objectives. You cannot place down key fallback spawn points, and you can't even communicate with other squads slash players as voice over IP is non-existent as of this video. Squad cohesion is nearly non-existent, and this is a major blunder to the BF, BF formula. As in the past, 64 player servers didn't need many of the features Planet Side offered. Maps were small and more filled in. They had lanes. Players could easily force objectives. Without these extra features to make 128 players flow more positively, Conquest and Breakthrough end up just being more of a clusterfuck and almost random. And with 128 players, it introduces performance issues. Planet Side 2 has been notoriously called out for its fucking performance issues every update. There are always a couple of players that can't keep up with the new features, but in Planet Side 2, Config files really help alleviate performance issues and allow players in even large fights to maintain 60 plus FPS on visually demanding settings and on low settings easily keep up to fucking 144 FPS. This is when there could be over 200 players in one area with tanks, ESFs, particle effects, and explosions with the mix of infantry. 
In BF2042, even players like me with high-end systems can barely even hold above 150 FPS on most servers. And now we all understand 2042 is a new game, has nine years on Planetside, however, it's unacceptable that a game releases in a state where even players with high-end PCs still struggle to get optimal FPS, which in turn hurts the budget players who can't, and they end up suffering with 30 to 80 FPS given the map and play account. Now, what I just talked about is a small snippet of differences between the games, right? One is an MMO FPS, one's a multiplayer FPS trying to be something it shouldn't. Do I recommend Planet Side 2 players try out 2042? I would. But on certain terms, if you have a good PC, enjoy infantry gameplay, and can deal with crashing bugs and issues the game released with, then sure. But Planet Side 2 is still free, still offers a good mix of gameplay and performance. Overall, Planet Side 2 still offers something unique that no game can a large-scale FPS battle that spans over an entire continent during prime time. Yeah, it's older. Yeah, it has its issues. But those issues are far less than what a $60 fucking game has. Which I know most people spend fucking $90 or more on. If you're interested in more Planet Side 2 videos, I have many on this channel. Uh, if you're a Battlefield 2042 player coming around and want to try out Planet Side, maybe I'd give it a shot too. Because in this state right now, 2042 is absolutely broken. And I... I still really can't recommend it other than to the people who like to have shots hit enemies, I guess. I figured, you know, that would be a normal function. But I guess we got that now in the last update. It only took them about a month to do. Um, thanks for watching. I do plan on releasing more Battlefield slash Planetside content in the future. And, uh, you know, go check them out. I'll see you guys later.